So in this video, I'm going to show you how to use the calculator to effectively solve any equation. Uh, and the idea is, is just this. You can solve any equation on the calculator by, by just graphing both sides of the equation as different functions and then looking for where those things intersect. Um, so I have one basic example of that, and then after that, we're actually going to use that for an intermediate value theorem problem. Um, because in some sense, at the end of every intermediate value theorem problem, you're needing to solve an equation. You're looking to find the value of c where our function is equal to something. So that's sort of why we're learning this. So the, the first example I have here is uh, I want us to find all the solutions to this equation, x to the fourth minus 2x squared plus x minus 2 equals sine x. Definitely an equation that we have no hope of solving, like, by hand. Like, I mean, the, the, like, factoring the left side is not going to do anything because the sine x, we just have nothing on this. Um, so I've got steps down below. Um, I'd mentioned before that the, sort of the first thing we want to do is we want to enter both sides of the equation. So, you know, sort of this side and then this side. We're going to enter each of those independently in our y1 and y2. So on your graphing calculator, you can, uh, you know, go into your y equals. And it looks like I've already got that first one typed in, x to the fourth minus 2x squared plus x minus 2. Um, so that was my step one. Step two is going down to the next line and putting in sine x. Um, anytime you're working with trig functions, please make sure that you're in radian mode. So I'm actually going to click on mode right now just to confirm that I'm in radian. If you're in degree, you're going to get a, a weird answer for this. Right. So now that we have that, we, we'll go ahead and hit our graph button. So up here in the upper right, we'll hit graph uh, to sort of take a look at this. So we already had our, our fourth power function in there, and now it's drawing the sine curve in there. And, and what I want you to notice is that, that, you know, when you're looking at this fourth power function and then the sine function, there are basically two points of intersection. There's this one here and this one here, right? And, and what we're looking for is we're effectively looking, I mean, this question wants us to solve and wants us to find x. We just need to find the x values of these points of intersection, right? So sort of moving on to the next step in this process, the next thing we do is we hit second trace. So right next to graph, there's a trace button right above that. It says calc. So if I hit second trace to bring up the calculate menu, what I want is the fifth thing there, intersect. So if I, you can either scroll down and hit enter, or you can just hit the number five. It'll now come back and ask a couple of questions. Um, in general, you're just going to hit enter twice. What it's doing is it's saying, hey, what's the first curve that you want to use? So notice that the flashing cursor here is on the, the, the quartic function. So if I hit enter, it basically selects that as my first curve. You'll notice now that the little flashing cursor has moved up to the sine curve. Great, so I'm just going to hit enter to select that curve. The next thing it does is it says, what's your guess? And the reason we need to guess is that there are two different answers here, and it will only find one intersection at a time. So I'm going to go for this one over here on the left. So if I just use the arrow keys to sort of move the cursor back here, it, you know, it doesn't have to be perfect, but you're just going to move it nearby and hit enter. It'll sort of think for a minute, and then when it's done, it will come back and say, hey, intersection. This intersection happened when the x value was negative 1.711. So, and, and as I say here in step 5, that x value that's displayed at the bottom of the screen is the x value where the functions intersect. And that means that it's a solution to our original equation. Um, so very commonly what I'll want to do, and I know I've, I've shown this in another video at some point, is, is I'll want to take that intersection and store it. I'll want to save it. So currently it's saved as x. We can quit back to the home screen and type x store, I don't know, maybe alpha a, and now that value is stored to a. You know, so on our assignment or whatever over here, we, you know, we can say that, you know, the x value we found was negative 1.711, um, you know, which, which we stored to a. Okay, um, so what I'd like you guys to do, if you have a graphing calculator, and if you don't, you can use the, the Wabbit EMU thing that I showed you guys the link for, um, I'd like you to find this other point of intersection. Um, so, you know, pause the video, go through it on your own, and find that intersection and make sure that you can do it. Um, so, all we should need to do is go second trace. We'll choose 5 for intersect. I'll hit enter for the first curve, enter for the second curve. Now, this time, my guess needs to be all the way over here. So, you can either hit these buttons to get over there, or you can actually just type in the number. You can go, well, you know, it looks like it's about 2. So, just hit 2 and hit enter. And it'll think and think and think again and come back and tell us that that point of intersection is 1.597. So just like I did before, I'm, I'm going to sort of be in the habit of storing this thing. 
so I'll store it to B. And on our paper, we could write down that our other solution was 1.597, which I stored to B. Okay? So, great, we solved this problem. This, this is the way that we solve equations on the calculator. Now, I had said that I also wanted to go through an intermediate value theorem problem, um, and so I do have this example set up. So I want us to find the value of c guaranteed by the intermediate value theorem for the function g of x equals x sine x um, on the interval from 0 to 2. And what I want is I want for g of c to equal 1.5. right? Um, so, so I'd like you guys to go through the steps of the intermediate value theorem. First, verify that it applies, and there are two steps to that. And then afterward, we'll sort of look at how we use the calculator to solve this problem. Right? So, so pause the video, work through the intermediate value theorem on your own, and then we'll come back and talk about it. So the first step in this process is that we need to make sure that the function is continuous, right? So we sort of think about that. Um, and our comment here is that the function g is continuous on the interval from 0 to 2 because it has no division by 0. Like, there, there's nothing innately wrong with this function that's going to cause it to have any discontinuities. And so we, you know, we just sort of say, hey, great, it's continuous. My next step is I need to look when we consider the values of g of 0 and g of 2, right? And the whole idea is that, that we're sort of plugging in the endpoints. We're plugging in 0 and 2, and we're making sure that 1.5 is going to be in between those things, right? So on the calculator, um, we can actually evaluate those things. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back into my y equals, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to actually plug in x sine x. And there are lots of ways to do this. This is just the way I, I want to do it. Um, and then I'll do alpha f4. We've talked about that before. If you, hit, if you hit the alpha button and then that trace button again, you can bring up y1. And we can just have y1 parentheses 0, and it will plug 0 into that, right? So we just found out that when we plug in 0, the answer is 0. Now to plug in 2, I'm going to do the same thing. Alpha trace or alpha f4. Pick y1. This time, plug in 2. And what I get back is, you know, 1.819. So great, this is 1.819. Right? And in this case, we can see that clearly 1.5 is between these values. Right? And so what does that mean? Right? What that means is the intermediate value theorem does apply. Right? So therefore, IVT does apply. So what do we need to do next? Right. The next step, oops, just realized I missed an equal sign here. Um, what do we need to do next? The next thing I need to do is I need to solve the equation c times the sine of c equals 1.5. Right. I need to figure out, okay, fine, so where does my function equal 1.5? Right. And, and doing this is, is hard by hand, but it's very easy using the calculator. On the calculator, we just go in here. We type in the left side my c sine c, which I'm going to leave as x sine x on the calculator, there. For the second thing, I just type in 1.5. Right? And when I graph it, it will graph the x sine x function. It'll, it'll take a second, but it'll graph it. And then after that, it'll graph the function 1.5. Right? And we'll notice that there are lots and lots of solutions. There's one here, there's one here, 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 here. I mean, there's lots of them. In my problem, I only wanted the interval from 0 to 2. So it may actually be valuable for us to go in and hit the window button. The window button's right here next to, next to y equals. And you can change your x min and x max. We could change it so that we are only looking between 0 and 2. And the graph's going to look a little bit funny. But when I graph it, notice it's starting here at 0 and it's going over here to 2. Right? And we could have changed our y window as well, so it didn't look quite as funny. But when I do it this way, we can sort of see, well, here's the x sine x curve, here's the 1.5 curve, now I just have to find that point of intersection. Right? So we'll go through and do that. Second calc, pick 5 for intersect, uh, enter for the first curve, enter for the second curve. For my guess, you know, I'm just going to sort of click over here until I'm close-ish. I mean, that looks pretty good to me. By the way, it looks like that's whole, like that's connected for a whole line. It's just because this calculator doesn't have an amazing screen. Um, we hit enter. It thinks for a second, comes back and says, hey, there you go. Your x value is 1.503. So great. Using the calculator, we 
find that our C value is 1.503. And, and that is our value of C that's guaranteed by the intermediate value theorem. Okay. So at this point, really any intermediate value theorem is fair game, because even if you can't solve it by hand, we have the tools that we need to solve it using a calculator. Um, this skill, this ability to find intersections and solve equations, will come up in other places. It's something that's important for us to know, so, so make sure that you sort of internalize this skill. I'll see you in class.